The word amphibian means double life. They spend part of their lives in water and part on land. And one trait about these creatures really stands out, and it's in their blood. <sighs> There's nothing like a swimming pool on a hot summer day. Sticky, sweaty, sweltering feeling gets instantly washed away as you slide through the cool water. But why is it that even on the hottest summer day, after being in the water for a while, you can't wait to get out and hit your body on the sun-warm deck? Mm, that feels good. Ooh, you're hot. Ooh, you're cold. Hot. Cold, but you're warm-blooded. You really don't need to bask in the sun. Your body temperature usually stays the same. But when I'm sick, my mom says I have a temperature and I can't go outside to play. When your body is fighting germs, your temperature can go up. And if it goes up too much, that's a bad thing. Then, you guessed it, yucky medicine. Ugh. But remember, you're warm-blooded, so your body temperature can only change a few degrees. Amphibians are cold-blooded. Why did the frog go to the hospital? To get a operation. <laughs> so what do cold-blooded animals do when it's really cold outside? Well, they hibernate, just like a bear. Well, not exactly like a bear. See this frog? It's frozen solid. In the colder months, it buries itself in the wet dirt and spends the winter, well, kind of like a popsicle. It even stops breathing. But each spring, when the world begins to thaw, it comes back to life. But like a popsicle, frogs and other cold-blooded animals don't like it when it gets too hot, either. So what do they do? Some amphibians, like this spadefoot toad, chill out by digging back into the dirt where it's cool. This is called estivation. It's like hibernation in the summer, except now amphibians are trying to beat the heat instead of avoiding the cold. How deep can a frog dig? Knee deep, knee deep. <laughs> But before it gets too hot, amphibians have another job to do. They have to find a mate and reproduce. Male frogs and toads attract their mates by singing. La, 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 la. Well, not exactly. More like this. Each kind of frog or toad has its own song. These songs attract the female so the pair can mate. A group of singing male frogs can be very loud. So listen for them when you're near a pond this spring. Uh, it works better if you're really a frog. Frogs lay their eggs in the water. These eggs are in a substance that looks like, well, snot. Ew. Yeah, it sounds gross, but this protects the eggs from drying out and from soaking up too much extra water. How fast the eggs develop depends upon the temperature of the water. The warmer the water, the faster the eggs develop into larvae. Larvae are the next stage of growth. Salamander larvae look kind of like their parents, but the eggs of frogs and toads develop into tadpoles that look pretty different from mom and dad. Amphibian larvae will stay in the water until they become adults. Going from egg to larvae to adult is called metamorphosis. For amphibians, this means starting life as a water animal and becoming an adult that spends most of its time on land. A double life. What did the frog order at McDonald's? French fries and a Diet Croak. <laughs> Amphibian larvae are eating machines, munching mostly on water plants like algae. But as they become adults, they begin to eat other things, like the bugs that live in the water. What did the frog say to the fly? You're really starting to bug me. <laughs> Most adult amphibians eat invertebrates, animals that don't have a backbone, like this cricket. Worms, slugs, and other insects also make a good snack. Large amphibians, like the bullfrog, can eat pretty big creatures, like mice and birds. In fact, amphibians eat a lot of animals we think of as pests. How does a frog catch something like a fly? Hey! They're really fast. Amphibians are able to catch their food because they have big mouths and a pretty awesome tongue. Their tongue is sticky 
and it attaches in the front of their mouth instead of the back, like your tongue. Uh. When food walks past or flies by, open goes the mouth, out comes the tongue, and uh. dinner is served. Could you do that? How about something easier? Amphibians have become important in helping scientists take care of the world around us. Biologists study them to learn about problems in the environment. When amphibian numbers drop, scientists look for the cause and how to fix the problem. This helps all living things, including us. Spring is the time to listen and look for frogs. So what are you waiting for? Hop over to the nearest pond to meet some of your amphibian neighbors. <laughs> Get him, get him, get him, get him. Get him, get him. Get him. If you want to learn more, head to the Science Trek website. You'll find facts, links, games, material for educators and parents, and much more. You'll find it all at sciencetrek.org.